the heat has finally broken for at least a little bit. We have a number of things going on uh, this week and over the upcoming weeks uh, that I wanted to make sure that you're aware of. First off, I will not be having office hours this week or next week. This week I am doing continuing education, so I am still available if there are any pastoral care emergencies. Please just give me a call. Um, next week I will be away, and so we have uh, Pastor Jessica Hahn from St. Paul's in Hainesport, who will be covering for me for pastoral emergencies. Feel free to reach out to her. Her phone number is on the paper. Um, also this week, we have VBS at Epworth United Methodist Church. Myself and a few other folks will be over there. So if you were planning on registering for something, you might want to do that. It's today. Um, and if you're looking for me in the evenings, you will not find me. So we will not be having Bible study this week. Um, next week, you have the pleasure of having Pastor George here leading worship while I am away at Crossroads. So feel free to stop by and hang out with him. Um, I'm sure it'll be a good time. Um, two other things coming up. Uh, Calvary is having a VBS August 5th through August 9th in the morning. Um, and so if this week didn't work out for anybody who wanted to do VBS, check out theirs. And then also, uh, I know of at least two kiddos who are First Communion age, and so we have set a date and a time for a First Communion class. First Communion will be Wednesday, August 14th at 10 a.m. It's a one-day class, probably about three, four hours. So if you know of somebody who's in early elementary school and is interested in receiving First Communion, let me know and we can get them uh, in the class, and it can be a very good time. Um, one more thing to just lift up, um, as always, Altar Guild and Counters need more folks. We're looking for about three to five folks to join both groups, minimum, so if you're above that number, don't worry, we'll take you. Um, but we would love to have some more folks to lift up the Altar Guild and the Counting Committee. If you want to join Altar Guild, see Martha. Yay, Martha. If you want to see join Counters, see Bob. Yay, Bob. Um, and they'll get you set up. It's not too terribly large of a commitment. Um, and the more folks we have, the smaller the commitment is. So please, you know, consider. It would be a good time. Um, we have a number of birthdays this week. So a very happy birthday this week to Rob Hosier, David Stahl Sr., and Jean Willard. Um, yes, do we have any other announcements? Wonderful. With that, I invite you to rise as you're able as we begin our service with the order of confession and forgiveness of sins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all of our sin and whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and have given ourselves to the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. No one can have them. Things you have done, the things you have failed to do. Turn our hands against you and our people of the light of spirit. So that we may live and serve you in your life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. 
by grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We continue with our gathering hymn, Savior, Like a Shepherd, Lead Us, hymn number 789.
heal each of us and make us a whole people, that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from Jeremiah, book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verses 1 through 6. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of, of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for the evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the rem remnants of the flock out of all the lands where I have driven them. And I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will rise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer, or be dismayed, nor shall they be any, any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up from David a righteous branch, and he, will, he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In this day, Judah will be saved, and Israel will be alive, live live in safety. And this is the name of the which he will be called, the Lord, our righteousness. <clears throat> Read Psalm 23, <clears throat> responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want to be in want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want to be in want. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your pride and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I am well in the house of the Lord. Second reading is from Ephesians, the uh, book of Ephesians to, uh, 11 through uh, 22. Remember that one time your Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at the time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise. Having no, having no hope and without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, you have once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one, and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of two, thus making peace, and might recon reconcile both groups to God and in one God, though the cross, thus putting to death the hostility, the hostility to it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who are near. For though, for, for though through him, both of us have access to one spirit through the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and are also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself as a cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you will also are built together spiritually into a the dwelling of place of God. Please rise as you're able for the gospel. Amen. were coming and going, and the disciples didn't have leisure even to eat. 
And so they went away in the boat to a deserted place to be by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. And as Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gesenaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized Jesus and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever he heard that he was. And wherever Jesus went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. So whenever I'm getting ready on a during the week to prepare my sermon, I always read through all of the appointed texts before I normally turn my attention to the gospel. You've seen it. I normally preach the gospel. But this week, the second reading from Ephesians is what caught my attention. It's a message of reconciliation, of new relationships within the body of Christ, bridging the gap between divided groups and becoming family, that sounds like a message of good news for us today. Now, I have to be honest, Ephesians is written in some very complicated Greek, and the English translations are a little bit tough to follow. That whole passage is actually one sentence in the Greek. So, I forgive you if it's a little bit hard to figure out what was being said. So, I'm actually going to read... Um, from the Common English Bible, which is a simpler translation, so that we can hear it again and try and grasp what's happening. Ephesians 2 through 11, 11 through 12, 11 through 22. So remember that once you were Gentiles by physical descent, you were called uncircumcised by Jews who are physically circumcised. At that time, you were without Christ. You were aliens rather than citizens of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of God's promise. In this world, you had no hope and no God. But now, thanks to Christ Jesus, you who were once so far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Christ is our peace. He made both Jews and Gentiles into one group, with his body, he broke down the barriers of hatred that divided us. He canceled the detailed rules of the law so that he could create one new person out of the two groups, creating peace. He reconciled them both as one body on the cross, which ended the hostility to God. When Jesus came, he announced the good news of peace to you who were far away from God and to those who were near. We both have access to the Father through Christ by the one Spirit. So now you are no longer strangers and aliens. Rather, you are fellow citizens with God's people, and you belong to God's household. And as God's household, you are built on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. This whole building is joined together in him, and it grows into a temple that is dedicated to the Lord. Christ is building you into a place where God lives through the Spirit. Lord, what a message that is for us this week. Because our, our world is fractured. Just turn on the news, scroll through social media, walk down the street. It feels like everything has become an us versus them, regardless of what side you're on. You don't like the other one. These identities that we claim, and so many others, become so encompassing that by claiming one side, we alienate the other. I'm sure that we have people on both sides here today. And I'm sure that there are other conflicts, whether they're big or small, that place dividing lines between us. I can think of so many. 
the author of Ephesians was writing to a community of people who followed Jesus. But this wasn't a unified community that was really confident in that. This ecclesia, this assembly, this new church was full of Jews and Gentiles. And my goodness, were the differences between those two groups of people immense. Jews, even those who followed Jesus, would have still kept the Torah. They would have maintained circumcision and food practices that are required in Leviticus and other places in the scriptures. Their culture and identity required them to hold firm this dividing line between themselves and the Gentiles. And Gentile belief and customs were equally in opposition to the Jews. According to Roman understandings, Jews, and especially those who followed Jesus, are atheists because they don't believe in the Roman gods. And they are a threat to the very foundation of society because they refuse to worship the Roman pantheon of gods who protected the cities and the countries. And so to say that there's a dividing wall of hostility, like verse 14 claims, is no exaggeration. And into this broken, divided, angry, hostile relationship, Jesus enters and reclaims both sides within himself, reconciling them in the body of Christ. To the Gentiles, he brought them near to God. To the Jews, he set aside the laws and regulations. In place of estrangement and requirements, Christ brings freedom and relationship. Christ reconciled Jew and Gentile in his body and put their hostility to death on the cross. Relationship with God and with one another overcomes difference and distance have to wonder what a difference it would make in our lives to view ourselves and our neighbors first and foremost not as liberal or conservative or this identity or that identity but as members of the body of Christ bound in relationship to Christ and to each other through our death and resurrection through Christ's death and resurrection what would that be like to view our lives through the light of God's love for all of creation. How would it inform us? How would it change our relationships with those who see things differently? Because it is so entirely human and natural for us to think primarily about ourselves when we think about things that are hard. It's so human to want to protect ourselves and those we love when we're in conflict. And yet, Christ requires us to remember that our family isn't just those chosen by blood or those who look like us and act like us. As followers of Christ, our family stretches so far beyond that because we are all siblings in Christ, bound together as family. And I wonder what our world would look like if each of us truly listened to the fears and concerns and needs of others to think that the person that you understand the least, the person that you dislike the most, that person is family for you. To know that that person is still worthy of love and care, and what would it be like to trust that that person will think the same way of you? In the early church, Jews and Gentiles, people who were so divided, were gathered together into one body, in recent decades, relationships between denominations have been healed and are healing. And in congregations and homes across America, we still find ourselves divided and hurting. And yet we are one in the body of Christ. And we are invited to renew our commitment to one another and remember our unity in Christ. The final verse of our text today read, and in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by God's spirit. What would it mean for us to believe that about our neighbors and ourselves? To view each other as places where God is dwelling. How might our conversations change? 
How might we speak differently about and to those who seem so entirely different from ourselves if we truly believe God is dwelling in, with, and through them? <coughs> Being members of the body of Christ doesn't erase our differences. It doesn't mean that we will always agree. It simply means that we will hold one another in love and respect that we will seek peace and justice for and with one another. It means that we speak to and about our neighbors with care. It means that in our disagreements, we seek to understand one another and to work together for the good of all. And to know that this family, this care for one another, doesn't reach only to those sitting here this, this week or to the people listed on our membership books or anything like that. It encompasses people across the globe. We are the body of Christ. We are bound to care for one another and to care for all of the world, which is God's good creation. We are called to love one another as Christ has loved us. And thanks be to God in Christ for his reconciliation of us through the cross and for God's boundless love for all the world. I pray that we would continue to know that truth and to behave in such a way. I pray that we would continue to live into the fullness of the love that God has for us and for all people and to share the news of it with all that we meet. In God's name we pray. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is, verses 1 and 2 and 5 and 6. Please rise as you're able.
Once in the communion of saints and the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. For the church of Jesus Christ in this and every land, through the one who is cornerstone of our firm foundation, join us together and build us up with a temple of mercy and peace. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the creation, cause new trees to be planted, restrain the melting of polar ice caps, save land from destruction. Like a shepherd tends her sheep, rise up among us caretakers for all who have made it. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations and heads of tribes, where peace seems far off, bring it near. Where justice seems fleeting, bring it to light. Where discord seems re relentless, bring harmony. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the health and well-being of all family and friends, neighbors, and heal those that are sick. Especially today we pray for Phyllis Hess, Linda Patton, Melba Beckler, Erna Bauer, Stephen Moore, Judy Kohler, Frank Sarcone, Elsie Hoffman, Don and Donna Flack, Taya Williams, Helen Willard, Ann Deeds, and the family and friends of Diane Drew. Give courage to all who struggle with addiction. Touch us with your tender care, all who reach out to you in pain. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. For this assembly and for the faith and communities we represented this week at the ELCA Youth Gathering. Nurture the faith of young people as they encounter new experiences of people. Break down dividing walls and inspire collaboration among people of every age. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for those who have died, make us certain that in Christ we are no longer strangers and aliens, but citizens with the saints of the household of God. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you're able. May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with those around you. At this time, I invite you to please be seated as we prepare to receive our offering.
served and nourished your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. We continue with our sending hymn, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me. <laughs> 